Is this gonna be good? I can come down a little bit. Hold on. I'll be right back. Actually, I'm not gonna stop. I'm just gonna pull the thing down. I know you can see down my cleavage, but whatever. Or maybe you can't. But now, hold on now. Uh, I'm still in a dress, even though you can't tell. I mean, you can if I open up and uh, do whatever. Sorry if I flash you guys there. Um, if you see me walking down the street uh, and I'm in a dress, I'm probably more inclined to look something like this uh, with uh, lots of leg, because I'm almost uh, well. I'm six, almost. I'm six four, and I got lots of leg. So your chances are you're gonna see me with lots of leg. But anyway, this is Villainous Times four. Uh, Tuesday, July 3rd, 2012. Um, what we're going to talk about right now is your worth. Your worth. Uh, you who are watching and identifying with me as someone who uh, barely survived an eating disorder and barely survived uh, several times in the course of my life just to get here, uh, which is pretty deadly. Um, as the new would say, it's pretty deadly. Um, so, uh, your worth. Uh, in terms of a, being in a relationship with people, and that's in any capacity, that's friendship or um, romantic, that's boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, partner, life partner type deal. Uh, your worth in that is uh, to be valued as you are. One of the key um, triggers, as uh, the eating disorder well, mental illness world uh, would say, uh, is the onset of an eating disorder would be that um, not being accepted uh, for who they are and having no... Uh, kind of like uh, either body dysmorphia uh, or inferiority complex or super introverted or uh, bullying, physical abuse, uh, mental abuse, uh, verbal abuse uh, in the home. In something, uh, usually it's like something close to home or in the home uh, that just doesn't happen. Uh, and it doesn't, like if they report it, nothing happens and that's a break of trust. So essentially, um, love uh, being... Uh, one of the things is like trust, acceptance, understanding, patience, virtue, uh, or patience, kindness, uh, slow to anger, um, uh, forgiveness. Those things need to be lived towards each other, and especially those who have an eating disorder, because uh, in order to, um, the only cure, cure, if there is one, it really isn't, uh, is um, the perseverance, the choice of the sufferer. Uh, which in a lot of cases uh, doesn't happen. The struggle goes on for years, and mine uh, went on for like 12, 13 years, I guess, for the most part. Um, and it probably uh, had it played a big factor in ruining my marriage, uh, and I haven't had a relationship in, well, a real relationship in like eight years, really. Uh, I haven't really gone on any dates or done, I basically suck at that realm. Uh, because I've never, and one of the reasons, not because, because uh, that's justification, but one of the reasons is because uh, I've never um, been allowed to be myself. Like, I've always catered to the comfort zone of the other individual uh, to a degree, like to a small degree, and eventually the degree becomes bigger uh, to where I'm totally not myself, and then you end up being a depressed husk because you want to be loyal to this person because there's love involved in romance and um, connection, and you really like them. Uh, but that all changes because uh, if you have to stop being yourself uh, and not grow in yourself, like grow to become better, more virtuous, more kind, more compassionate as who you are, uh, when you first started the relationship, then it's detrimental to you and the other person because they'll just get more comfortable with themselves and with you, uh, and then eventually one of you breaks, which is unfortunate. I broke. Uh, pretty not fun. Um, but uh, yeah, your worth in a relationship or in the world uh, is uh, far beyond that uh, which you probably feel and that which people give you. I mean, I'm creating these uh, videos and I'm going to hopefully uh, travel the world. I mean, I want to public speak. I want to speak to you people. I want to meet you. I want to talk to you. I want to, you know, obviously I'm not going to have time for everybody. And I mean, right now nobody, nobody talks to me at all. So uh, I got tons of time. Um, but eventually, if I can put together a nonprofit group for uh, raising eating disorder awareness, or eventually, if I can ever get enough money to do this full time, like saved up or coming in, uh, I will do that. And I don't plan on ever owning anything uh, that will hinder me from going forward and um, 
empowering you guys, giving you hope, giving you identification with someone that, you know, suffered and nearly died and uh, had problems and um, as it still has problems and isn't perfect, but is out there just doing my best because I, that's who I am. This is over the course of my mental illness have I become this thing that is now giving itself to you uh, in whatever capacity you should find me and see me in. I mean, right now I'm in a dress with a blazer on and a scarf and uh, my hair is fantastic um, in my own eyes because um, I'm just really happy with me at this point. And I want you to be mostly happy with you uh, and becoming more and more happy with yourself in terms of contentment uh, with how you look and how you appease others and uh, how you project yourself to the world um, and how you identify with the world uh, and how people identify with you. Uh, not that that matters as much other than um, like the world external, but the world in your house, the world around you, the people around you that are gathered around you as friends and family and stuff like that. Those people need to understand that they need to uh, work on accepting you. And in order to do that, they have to work on understanding you, which both are a key facet to uh, or they need trust, and trust is the fundamental uh, element of um, any sort of love or virtuous living. Uh, you have to trust yourself, and then you have to trust others. So um, the key is, uh, for those who suffer like me, is whatever you want to become, or whatever you want to receive, uh, however hard it is, you must first start becoming. Because if you're in a relationship and you can't um, be content with who you are that day, uh, like in the slow progress of journey of life, uh, you will find it extremely hard to believe that the other person truly loves you. It'll be, there are all sorts of, um, you know, scenarios that will be running through your head as to what's going on when they're not around you and this and that. And, um, because it, you just, there's no trust in you towards them. And that has nothing to do with them unless they've created something to break trust. But, um, you need to be able to uh, realize that you need to be self-aware and not self-conscious, uh, which is, you know, that, that's a step all in to its own. Um, so I want you guys to uh, know that you're worth uh, something uh, beyond um, what society tells you, no matter how you look or what your sexuality is or what you believe. Uh, I'm, it care, I care about how you live it and I want you to live it uh, first and foremost, uh, content uh, in the day-to-day -day life uh, of who you are, like how you look, and the journey, the long, drawn-out journey that it is to become who you want to become and how you want to project yourself and how you want to look. Um, I mean, I'm 30, and I've just bought my first dress, and I think it's fantastic. So, I mean, don't think that, oh, my goodness, I'm 15 or 17 or 12 or 13 or, you know, 23 or whatever age 40, even 35, that you have to become that thing that you want. You have to obtain the thing that you want tomorrow. Um, I carry only what um, I can take with me, basically. Uh, so that way, but that's me. I don't put any stock in um, the physical uh, monetary uh, values, things, because I put the stock in you guys. I believe that you guys are worth uh, all the ridicule uh, that quite possibly I I will receive and all the bullying that I have received, all the trauma and affliction and sorrow and you know, crappy life that I've had, uh, near-death experiences and uh, not near-death as in, I saw a light and I was like, oh my goodness, right? I was like, I saw my body and I was like, I'm going to go back to my body. And then I saw the light and I was like, I'm not going to go back to my body. I didn't really want to. I want to go heaven or whatever's next, right? Not that kind of, just like near death as in like my mental illness almost killed me more than once, uh, overexertion and due to control, which was part of um, my mental illness, the lack of eating, um, malnutrition, uh, stuff like that. So um, I want you guys to, um, for, so be content and then um, start slowly realizing who you want to become inside so that you can have a healthy inside and that will project to the external. Really, honestly, it does. Um, the more uh, you're content and healthy on the inside, the more you're able to reflect that externally. And first and foremost, that comes with a smile. And then after your smile, it, you, you have no idea the power of what you can do with yourself uh, once you start 
um, I'm not going to say believing in you, uh, but once you start uh, realizing the dream that's inside of you, like my dream, my soul's dream uh, is to help you guys. And I don't know what your soul's dream is, but I want to cultivate. I want to find it. I want to help you find it. I want you to like read things that I say or listen to what I say or hear me, my music, hear to see me speak. So that way the dream that's inside of you may be cultivated and it might spin and whirl and you might become aware of it. And then in that opportunistic moment of realizing that there is something in you uh, like the reason that you live, this dream, is more than just being accepted. Uh, because that's, that's honestly, like, I'm probably going to get, like, ridiculed out of my mind by tons of people because I wear a dress, because I look this way, because I act this way, because, you know, um, people just are haters, but because of my political views, because of my uh, religious views. Uh, but I'm okay with that, because I'm here for you. And I'm not here to be, um, I'm not here to gain anything, really. If I gain anything, I'd like to get the gain, uh, the freedom to uh, do this more often uh, and um, travel the world and speak to you guys, uh, speak in your schools, speak to your families, uh, speak in your churches, speak in your auditoriums. Uh, in your theaters when I do stand-up. I want to empower the world uh, and if I die not having done that, everything... I'll be okay with that because I was on the journey and the journey is what matters, not the destination. Well, not so much. How you live every moment. That you're aware of your living. That's key. So anyway, I'm going to be back in part three. I forgot what I was going to do with part three, but welcome to the Villainous Times for whatever day it is. On the day that came before and after the next day. I really need some food.